Hello artists, welcome to your Young at Art class. In front of you, you should have your um, canvas long ways like so. Please also have a cup of water, a large brush, a small brush, a paper towel, white, black, bright yellow, purple, pink. Also be sure you have your dinosaur cutout and a pencil to trace with later. Um, if you don't have all those materials, you are welcome to pause the video. And if you want, it's optional for this class, but I always kind of have like a paper plate onto the side in case I need to uh, mix colors later on. Uh, but let's go ahead and get started. Uh, the first thing we're gonna do is we are going to swirl our two brushes in our cup of water and get them nice and clean. And then we're gonna tap, tap, tap onto the paper towel to make sure that they're not too wet. Once I'm done washing and drying, I am gonna take my big brush and dip it into the yellow. I'll find the middle area of my canvas going side to side, but I'm gonna come down about an inch or two further down, about right here, and I'll make a yellow line that goes all the way from one side to the other. So a little bit further down than the middle. So right here is about the middle, a little bit further down. Make a line like so. And then I'm gonna come up just a little bit as well. Maybe a little bit higher than the middle. And make another yellow line. I'm also gonna take a little bit of yellow and turn it to the left of my canvas where those two lines fold over and to the right of my canvas where those two lines fold over. It's about a ruler's width, maybe a little bit thicker. So a little bit lower than halfway down, a little bit higher than halfway up. And then once you're done creating those two lines, you can take some yellow, not too much, and just paint side to side between those two lines. And I'm just kind of taking my brush, going side to side, making sure there's no bumps on my paint. Also carrying it over to the left between those two lines and to the right those two lines perfect that's a nice light yellow side to side and be sure it's nice and flat once you're done you're gonna wash your brush and dry your big brush and you're gonna go back to your purple. You're gonna go back to your purple with your big brush. I'm sorry, not back to your purple. You're gonna go back to your big brush and then you're gonna go into your purple. So big brush, purple paint. I'm gonna start from the very top of my canvas and go about this far down, a little bit thicker than a ruler's width. And I'll even carry the purple to the left, to the right. So ruler is about that thick. I'm gonna come down just a little bit further and all that space above that line that I made, I'm just gonna paint it purple from side to side. Again, making sure that the paint is nice and flat and I'm going from one side to the next, left to right. So you have your purple, your white space, and your yellow. Also, I wanna paint all of the side yellow where it curls over. Excuse me, purple where it curls over up here, all purple work curves over to. And then the very top of my canvas where it curls over, I want it to be purple as well. Perfect. So the top of part of my canvas, including the right, the left, and the very top is purple. side to side. I might give it a minute or two to dry and then go back over it one more time so my purple is just a little bit darker. So if you wanted your purple to be a little bit darker you can go back after a minute and paint it purple one more time. Once I was done with that I'm not going to clean my brush but I am going to add just a little bit of white to my brush and I'm going to go in between the yellow and the purple with some purple and white on my brush. 
And with the purple on my, and white on my brush, I'm gonna go up into my purple that I just did a little bit. But again, purple, white, maybe tap it on your paper towel a little bit. So I'm gonna have this light purple color, it's called lavender. I'm not gonna touch the yellow paint just yet. I'm gonna come up into that purple that we just did just a little bit with my purple and white. And I'm gonna curl it over to the left. I'm gonna curl it over to the right. Like so there's still a little bit of white space between that light purple that I just made and my yellow. Once I was done with that, I'm just gonna go back and add white to my brush. So no more purple, but I'm gonna add white to my brush and I'm gonna come over my purple just a little bit with this white and come down a little bit into my yellow with just this little bit of white. So there's kind of like a more of a white in this area, but it's mixing in with your light purple and your yellow. And you can always use your water if you want to tap it on your paper towel a couple times and go over this white that you just put on there. Again, I didn't clean my big brush. I just kind of jumped into more white. Came up a little bit, came down a little bit, side to side. And I'm gonna even paint the left side. A little bit over the yellow, a little bit over the purple and white. A little bit more, a little over the yellow. Cleaning up that space. Perfect, perfect. And again, I am gonna wash and dry my brush and I am gonna go back over this purple, give it another coat now that I've given it some time to dry to make that purple just a little bit darker. So I've given it some time to dry and I went back and just made it a little bit darker, giving it another coat. Once I was done with that, um, I'm gonna go back to more purple, so be sure you just have purple on your brush at this point. And I'm going to add um, just little sweeps of purple in this white part underneath here. So I'm just gonna go side to side with my purple, left to right. So I just had purple on my brush, so be sure your brush is clean and your purple just going side to side. I'm not quite touching the yellow paint and there's still gonna be a little bit of white peeking through on my canvas. And I'll even add some purple on its own with my big brush onto the side. Onto the side. Don't worry about the very bottom. You don't have to worry about the very bottom where it folds over. But most of it on the bottom part is now covered with purple. I'm not gonna clean my brush. I'm just gonna dip it into the white so it still has purple and white. And I'm gonna start from the bottom and just gonna sweep some white in there too. More white on the bottom. So I'm gonna just kinda start there and then I'll sweep back and forth. At this point, once I'm done, I do not wanna see any of my white canvas. So I'm just kinda flicking back and forth, starting at the bottom. And as I work my way up, there's less white on my brush. And now I can kind of get closer and maybe even just touching that yellow line just a little bit. I don't want to have any white canvas peeking through. I'm just kind of going back and forth with my brush. And if you're still working on the top part, you're welcome to always pause the video if you need to go back to it. And when you're ready with this purple and white, you can go back to your um, playing your video. And again, most of the bottom part, I put sweeps of purple going back and forth, even on the left side and then on the right side. Now I didn't clean my brush and I started with the bottom and worked my way to the top. Just more sweeps of white. Same with the left side, I added white and worked my way up. Added white and worked my way up. Like so. Again, you don't have to worry about the very bottom. I'm not gonna clean my brush at this point. 
uh, but I am gonna add some stars and clouds in my sky. Now that I've given my sky some time to dry while I was working out down here, if your sky is still pretty wet, maybe give it a minute or two where it's not so shiny anymore before you build any of these on top. Um, but I am gonna add a little bit of purple and a little bit of white clouds. That same brush I just used down here should have a little bit of purple and white on it. For my clouds, I'm just gonna be tapping back and forth and it kind of gets thinner and thinner, so I push on my brush less and less. So um, purple and white, and white on my brush at the same time. Um, you can always kind of dab it on your paper towel if you feel like you have too much on there. Or you can always go back for more of purple and white and maybe tap it on your paper towel. But right here where my yellow and my white and purple kind of meet up, I'm gonna take my brush, I'm just gonna kind of jump up and down I might need a little bit more. So purple, white, tap it on my paper towel. I'm just gonna jump side to side. And then as I come up in the middle, then I just kind of thin it out. So I made a line side to side and I come up and then I just go back into that line because I want the ends of my clouds to be a little bit thinner. Let me go down a little bit further. I'm gonna go tap side to side. Barely any paint on my brush, not too much. I'm going to make another mini cloud. Maybe another one here. Just pushing side to side. Do another one over here. You can always go back to more purple and white. Tap it on your paper towel. Go side to side. And this one maybe come up a little bit and the ends of my clouds get a little bit thinner. So I'm just kind of jumping with my brush. Come up a little bit further. And up and then back down. This one is a little bit less visible, just a little bit of that purple and white showing. Maybe even one more down here, going back and forth. Just jumping with my bigger brush. Perfect. As I get higher up, I do want more white on my brush. I'm not gonna even clean it. It's okay if there's still a little bit purple on there, but I do wanna tap it on my paper towel again so I don't have too much on there. And I'm gonna go up a little bit uh, closer to that darker purple. And same idea, I am just gonna jump up and down. I'm gonna go side to side. And then with this one, I will come up a little bit higher and then come back down. And there is a little bit of a brighter one again too. So white, tap it and get this lighter cloud up here too. So I'm just gonna go side to side with my big brush. Not as long for this one. And I'll come up a little bit further. Let's go back and flatten it out on the bottom. There you go. Uh, without, oops, sorry. Without cleaning my brush, I'm gonna come down so you can see a little bit better. Without cleaning my brush, I am gonna go to more white. If you feel like you have a lot of purple still on your brush, you can wipe the purple off on your paper towel and just go back to more white. But up here, I do have a moon. I do have a moon up here. I'm gonna make this circle. Um, it's not a complete circle, but I guess more of a C shape. And it's more in that purple and white area. See how I made a C shape? And then I'm gonna paint it kind of continuing with that C shape so my moon looks nice and round. So I made a C shape and I filled it in. Don't worry about the side where it folds over. Like so. And again, if you need to pause the video, if you're still not at this point yet, no problem. You're welcome to pause it and then come back to us when you're ready for the next step. After you moon, you're not gonna even have to worry about cleaning your brush. You're gonna use the back of your big brush, dip it into the white paint, and make some stars in your sky area. We're still letting our land dry a little bit more, so don't worry about the land area just yet. But I'm gonna dip the back of my big brush and mostly up here closer to the moon, not as much down here with the white and yellow, 
I'm gonna make some dots very random, just kind of all over the place. And if you push a little bit harder on your, the back of your big brush, you're gonna get bigger stars. And if you push a little bit less, you're gonna get some smaller stars. Also, if you feel like your moon is still a little bit too purple, you can let it dry and go back to it with a clean brush and some white paint and get it a little bit brighter. So again, just kind of pushing down on the back of my big brush, some a little bit smaller with a little bit of a uh, less push, some pushing down a little bit harder for some bigger stars. So a nice variety. All right. Then I'm gonna go ahead and wash and dry my big brush. Again, you can dry, you clean the back of it too just by rubbing it on your paper towel. The next thing we're gonna do is we are gonna build some mountains. We're gonna build our mountains, but we are gonna use our smaller brush, our smaller brush. I am gonna use my plate, so if you don't have a plate at this point, uh, uh, this point, please grab one. I'm gonna mix some white and a little bit of black and make a gray outline for our mountains. So small brush. Oop, get a nice scoop out on my plate. Let me see if I can show it a little bit closer. Some white on there. And a tiny bit of black. I'm gonna mix a nice gray, like a pencil lead gray. A little bit of black goes a long way, so if you need to add more white, you can. I always wipe off the sides after I'm done mixing. So it's kind of like a pencil lead gray. A nice gray. Perfect. And I'm still mixing with my small brush. I start out with two scoops of white, a dot of black, and then I did add some more white to make it lighter, like a pencil lead gray. Maybe another one. Oh, excuse me. A little bit lighter. Just kind of mixing with my small brush and wiping off the sides. All right, and I am gonna use that gray next. What I'm gonna do with that gray, again, be sure your background is nice and dry. I'm gonna go in there and make a gray line, just little sweeps going side to side with a purple and the yellow meat. So I'm just kind of going over the two just little sweeps side to side. Once I'm done, don't worry about this, um, the left side or the right side. Once I'm done, I'm gonna come up a little bit higher. I still want some of my yellow to peek through, but I wanna make this pointy mountain. So there's still that cloud. I'm gonna dip down. I'm gonna come up to the right of that cloud. This one's a little bit more curvy about the same height. Come down. This one's a little bit more flat, longer, and not as high. Just kind of sweeping my brush. I'm gonna come up a little bit higher, a little bit more of a rounded one. I'm gonna dip down a little bit here too. See that one right there. So I have my two outlines, I have this one going side to side and I have the top of my mountains. Once I'm done, I'm gonna go back to that gray that I have and I am just gonna sweep some areas of up and down, up and down, just kind of the way that my mountains are forming. So up and then down, up. You can still see some of the yellow in there, that's totally fine. Just sweeping some up and down diagonal lines in that space. And I'm still seeing some of the yellow. And I'm keeping between these two yellow lines. And without cleaning my brush, I'm just gonna go back to more white. Ooh, I grabbed some pink in there from earlier, sorry. I didn't clean my brush, I just went back to more white. And it's okay if the white touches the gray, but you're just kind of working in that same formation. Be sure to kind of go over that gray line that you made too. But I'm coming up on my mountains, down on my mountains. I'm slowly filling in that space and I'm going over my line work too. Going up on my mountains, 
covering up the line, and then down on my mountains. A little bit more white. So that dark gray and the lighter gray that you just kind of made by adding more white on your brush are working together. So you have all types of grays, a little bit of areas where there's a little bit more white going up on my mountain, down on my mountain, and covering up my line. And if your line got messy, you can always add water to your small brush, tap it on the paper towel. Just use your water to kind of smooth out the top area or the bottom and add some water to kind of clean that up as well. So water, tap, tap, tap. You can go over your line work to clean up your mountains. So white. They got a little bit too dry here. You can go back to add more gray back down here. By the time I got down here, my dark gray paint was a little bit dry. So I'm gonna add white. Oh, keep on catching that pink. So white. And then you can go up your mountain and then down your mountain. You go over your line. I caught some pink from earlier from my other class. Sorry about that. Up my mountain, down my mountain. And again, if you wanted to add some water to kind of clean it up a little bit, you can. Water, tap, tap, tap. And outline this area a little bit better. Up the mountain, down the mountain. Small little sweeps. I'm gonna cover up my line. This point now that my moon is a little bit more dry I think I'm gonna go back and add some more white on top to kind of white it out just a little bit more like so. and then you can make sure both of your brushes are nice and dry once your mountain is nice and dry so once your mountains are nice and dry maybe give it a couple minutes then you can start creating your dinosaur, your dinosaur. And let me show you how. All right. I give it a couple minutes to dry. Ooh, I got some pink on the back of this. I definitely don't want any pink on my paint. Wipe off the back of it. I'm gonna lay my dinosaur and it's gonna be uh, facing towards the right. Kind of in the middle. There's a little bit of space down here for grass, so be sure there's a little bit of space still on the bottom that we're gonna build for grass. Alright. So look at the space I have I'm leaving for grass later on. Be sure your mountains are nice and dry. You might want to give them a couple minutes before you lay your dinosaur on top. You're gonna take your pencil, hold your dinosaur with one hand. And outline your dinosaur with the other hand and create this nice dinosaur shape. Okay, I'm gonna make this nice outline all the way around. So hold with one hand, outline with the other hand with your pencil. Make sure you're leaving some space for grass. And you can just lift up your dinosaur and voila. All right. So for our grass, we are going to use our small brush. And that's what we're going to do next. We're going to leave our dinosaur alone for just a moment. But we want to kind of see how much space we have down here. I'm going to use my small brush. I'm going to add a little bit of pink and a little bit of purple on my small brush at the same time. And starting from the bottom, I'm going to flick up. I'm just gonna make these little flicks going up. So a little bit of pink, a little bit of purple. Just gonna start from the bottom. Oh, maybe that's a little bit more purple than that. I'm gonna flick up from the bottom. Again, be sure you're not touching the dinosaur shape. You wanna leave that dinosaur shape alone. Leave a little bit of distance between the two. I'm grabbing too much purple. Yeah. My purple, there it is. 
it's purple and pink on your small brush at the same time and you're just gonna flicking up from the bottom but doing your best not to get it on your dinosaur small brush pink purple flick up come on purple there we go We'll let these dry a little bit, but we are going to put some black sweeps on top of it, the grass. Just kind of coming up, sweeping up. Add some water to my brush, tap, tap, tap. My paint got a little bit dry, so I added a little bit of water, went back over it. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna build my trees. I'm gonna use my small brush. Be sure it's really washed and dried. I'm gonna use my black paint. And up here in the sky, a little bit further, up from the yellow, so small brush, black paint, I'm gonna come up and make a diagonal line. Not all the way up. As you can see, there's still a little bit of space up here. And then I'm going to make another branch kind of coming up like so. And then another branch to the right coming up like so. I'm going to come up a little bit further and make another diagonal line. Come up like so. With that same small brush and the black paint that's on my small brush, I'm going to add a little bit more. I'm going to pat on my paper towel and I'm going to just start kind of jumping with my small brush. A little bit above and a little bit below my branches. So I'm gonna come up here. There's a little bit of a point at the end of this one. So black paint, pat it on your paper towel. And then at the ends of these, don't really worry about down here, but to the left of this branch, to the right of this branch, there's a little bit of a point on top. And I can kind of work my way to the left, a little bit to the right. This one too. But to the right of this branch. And I'm just jumping with my small brush. Come up a little bit higher. And maybe a little bit lower. It's gonna slowly fill in your tree. You don't want to go too far down here though black, tap it on your paper towel, just kind of be jumping. I went around my branches first, to the left and to the right. And then I kind of went back in and added some around. Make sure it looks nice and full. There is another tree that kind of comes out here um, on the right side as well. I'm gonna kind of clean that one up. There's another tree that comes out to the right as well up here. Same idea. I'm gonna start up a little bit further from my yellow where the purple and white is. I'm gonna come up into a diagonal. I'm gonna pass my moon. Be sure your moon's nice and dry. I'm gonna make a line going up this way. And then a line to the left of it, that way. Once I'm done, I'm just gonna bounce to the left, maybe not as much on my brush, and to the right of my branches. So like this one. You don't want too much black on there. So be sure you're just kind of getting less and less on your brush. a little bit more. While I'm doing 
is just kind of jumping on my on my branches. You can be sure your moon is nice and dry. Perfect. Next step is my dinosaur. So I'm going to use that same small brush. Be sure it's pretty nice and clean. Ooh, let's do that. Make sure there's no bits of white or anything on there. I'm going to take my black paint and my small brush and I'm going to outline my dinosaur. So I'm pretty much going over my pencil line with my black paint. Nice long brush strokes. Keep it nice and clean. And once you're done, you can use your small brush or your big brush to kind of fill in this space. I just want to keep those nice clean lines and be sure you're being very careful when you're filling in your dinosaur. And be sure your gray paint is nice and dry, your purple paints are nice and dry. If you're still working on your trees, you can put the video on pause. Like so. And then again, you can use your smaller brush, maybe in the smaller areas and your bigger brush in the bigger areas and fill in all of your dinosaur shape. Just be very careful to stay in those lines. I think I'm gonna use my smaller brush in the legs, inside the face, inside the tail. And then I'll use my bigger brush for those bigger areas. And be sure you don't see any of the color peeking through. Make sure my big brush is nice and clean. Black paint. Good now. Okay. Make sure your dinosaur looks nice and smooth. You don't want any big bumps of paint on there. And the last thing in just a moment is making sure that purple and pink are nice and dry. And then just kind of building some black grass on top. I'd probably go back and give this another coat of black. I'm gonna put my big brush aside. Maybe um, wait for this to dry a little bit more if um, I wasn't just going all the way through. Be sure you don't have big shiny areas, uh, but once it's nice and dry, not so shiny down here, you can use your small brush and just kind of flick from the bottom. You still wanna see a little bit of that purple peeking through, and a lot of the grass blades are a little bit shorter, so you don't see as, so you can still see that pink and purple. So small brush, start from the bottom, just kind of flick up. Be very careful of your dinosaur, you don't wanna get any on them. And once you're done, you can always go back and touch things up if you want to. Just remember, if you have a wet paint and another wet paint touches it, they're gonna mix. So if you don't want your colors to mix, be sure to give them some drying time. I'm going all the way from left to right and back to kind of fill up the space a little bit more. Go back here and touch my trees a little bit more. Otherwise, your dinosaur painting is all done. I hope you had a great time. And again, don't feel um, bad if you need to go back and touch things up. Thank you so much, artist. You did a great job.